All right, it's book review time, and this one is Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blunt. This is a fantastic book on sales, but more importantly, prospecting. So we think about prospecting, I would call it essentially the foundation of sales. I mean, outside of strategy, obviously, one of the first things you want to do and the first thing you need to do to be successful is to continue to keep your pipeline full. And you do that by prospecting. So in chapter one, Jeb does a really good job of talking about good, bad, mediocre, consistent, and superstar prospecting. Throughout the book, he talks about all the various types of prospecting there is, including actions, reactions, and mindset. And that's another thing with this book that you'll find is that while there's not a lot in this book that is totally going to revolutionize the way you do sales or prospecting, there is a lot woven into almost every chapter about mindset. Because as you can imagine, prospecting, sales, cold calling can be very daunting at times. If you're one who's always pounding the phones, those constant no's, no after no after no, can really beat you down. And so there are a lot of really great, what I would call role-playing and scenarios that can help you apply a situation to almost any business in any industry and help you or your team really try to navigate your way out of it. Because so often when we go through these ups and downs psychologically, sometimes it just takes a couple of victories, a couple W's to get you out of that. And so that mindset, I think, is really important and maybe even possibly underrated. Now, within the topic of mindset, early on in Chapter 2, he talks about the seven core mindsets that define fanatical prospectors. I found this to be really interesting because the way I thought of it before was good mindset, bad mindset, positive, negative. But here's how they, they function. Number one, optimistic and enthusiastic prospectors. Number two, competitive. Number three, confident. Number four, relentless. Number five, thirsty for knowledge. Number six, systematic and efficient. Number seven, adaptive and flexible. Adapt, adapt, adapt. Chapter three is called to cold call or not to cold call. At the surface, this seems very elementary, and I'll tell you that the subject is really the fine art of interrupting. Now, if you want sustained success in your career, we know that we will have to interrupt our prospects. But here's the problem. We don't like interruptions. We don't like interruptions when people call us. We don't like it when people distract us. We don't like it when people get in our way from doing something. And so we have to stop seeking the easy way out and start to interrupt and engage with people. One of the things he says in this chapter that really resonated with me is this. If you don't interrupt relentlessly, your pipeline will be anemic. And I 100% believe that. And that is a bit of that mindset I talked about earlier is we have to get over the fact that we are interrupting people, that we may be interrupting what they are doing or stopping something that they are doing. And we just have to get that relentless mentality programmed into our brain. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the chapters, but the first couple were really important, and I think this is what got me hooked into the book, in that there really is a philosophy and there really is framework here for fanatical prospecting. And one of them was really the urgency or the need to always be prospecting. And he does a really good job of selling that need early on. However, he talks about in Chapter 4 how to adopt a balanced prospecting methodology. And one of the things was the fallacy of putting all of your eggs into one basket. It says in sales, consistently relying on a single prospecting methodology consistently generates mediocre results. So on the other hand, he suggests balancing your approach based on your industry, product, company, territory, or maybe even your tenure in your territory. And I think that's pretty interesting because we know sales is not a one size fits all. We also no, we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket because if something were to happen to social media, to email marketing, to any one of the things that we do for prospecting, that could put a massive monkey wrench in what we do and set us back significantly. So this was a really great way to go about suggesting that we need to diversify our prospecting and our sales methodologies. 
In chapter four, things become really, really interesting. Jeb talks about the more you prospect, the luckier you get. And I think this is a statement that's always true in like golf and other sports. But there were three core laws of prospecting that he talks about. Number one is the universal law of need. Number two is the 30-day rule. And number three is the law of replacement. And I want to just briefly talk about these because these are not things I had heard before. And I think there's some real value in these things. So number one, the law of need. So the more you need something, the less likely it is you will get it. So desperation magnifies and accelerates failure. Just think about that. Um, we don't want to be searching for prospects when we are in dire straits, right? We want to always be prospecting so that we always have people in our pipeline, right? Number two, the 30-day rule. And I, I want to underline this because this really resonated with me. He says the activity gap in sales in December leads to low sales in March. So the rule states that prospecting you do in a 30-day period will pay off in the next 90 days. So think of it this way, you buy stocks, it pays dividends later. That is true in a lot of things that we do. A lot of us are looking for that short-term return, but really prospecting is about the long-term, looking at the macro here. And I, I really like this one. Number three is the law of replacement. This one states that you must constantly put new prospects into your pipeline to replace those that naturally fall out. So replacement must be at the rate that matches or exceeds your closing ratio. So again, if you close three prospects today, you should be putting three more in there today as well, or at least by tomorrow. Otherwise, there's going to be a discrepancy down the road at some point. Because as he states, the anatomy of a sales slump is this. 99% of sales slumps can be linked directly to a failure to prospect. And I would say based on my career and based on my experience, that is 100% true. I've seen even good salespeople go through these peaks and valleys in sales and in prospecting. And it goes back to exactly that, peaks and valleys in prospecting. Okay, so I'm going to give you one more chapter that I really enjoyed before I wrap this up and give you a review. Uh, chapter eight is called Time, the Great Equalizer of Sales. And there were a couple of really awesome gold nuggets here that I, I resonated and I highlighted. Um, number one is adapt a CEO mindset. So he says, see yourself as the CEO of you. Now, I know that seems a little cliche, a little elementary, but a true test of a CEO is the ability to find creative solutions to inevitable roadblocks. And what we need to do is we need to take ownership. We can't make excuses, and most excuses are BS excuses, and we can't also place blame on anyone else but ourselves. And so adapting not only a positive mindset, but the CEO, fall on the sword. It is no one's fault but our, our own for not prospecting or having those discrepancies or having those setbacks month after month. Number two was what he calls and refers to multiple times throughout the book as the golden hours says when prospecting levels are high, you will naturally generate a lot of follow-up tasks. So start by getting your priorities straight. So ultimately the golden hours are the, the hours during the day. For most of us, that's typically gonna be our, our 9 a.m. to our 3 p.m. where we are going to have the highest probability of reaching our prospects and our, our prospective clients. The platinum hours are the hours both before and after that that we use to do maybe some administrative stuff, CRMs, emails, follow-ups, other things that are secondary to the most important thing, which is prospecting and selling. And so I really enjoyed that term because it, it helps us look at time management very differently. He does talk a lot about setting schedules and blocks of time to help us get into these deep work habits and behaviors. Because ultimately, that is one big thing that holds us back. We make a lot of BS excuses and talk about time and interruptions. But ultimately, we need to block and prioritize that time. Because if we're not blocking it, it's not on our calendar. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It doesn't happen. So there's so much more to this book. I could talk about this for hours. And there's a lot of really good stuff. Now, again, I don't know that anything is going to revolutionize the way you do sales. But I think it's going to help you generate some new habits, some new behaviors, possibly some new perspectives. And in my opinion, this is one of the best sales books on the market. Now, from the surface level, it may not seem like it. It may not look like it. 
but this is one of the best selling sales and prospecting books you're going to find. It gets down to the nitty gritty. It gets down to the foundation of sales. And that so often I think is what we tend to overlook. In sports, we tend to overlook the fundamentals because it's boring, we're too advanced, we're too good for this. A lot of people feel that way, especially younger folks. And so if there's a, a maybe a kink in the hose or um, a weakness in the link, it's likely to be in the prospecting. And so I, I would encourage you to buy this book. As much as I'd said again, and I'll say it again, this book is not going to revolutionize the way you do sales. I think that this book is a great gift for someone on your sales team or in your company, someone who's getting started. This, I wish I would have had this book earlier on in my career. I wish I would have read it sooner, honestly. Um, I'm going to say, as far as sales goes, this is probably a top five book for me. I'm going to go as far as to give it a 4.8. And the reason I give it that, a couple of reasons. Number one, it's well written. There is a lot of golden nuggets in here, regardless for where you're at in your journey, in your career. And it's time tested. And I think that's important. A lot of this stuff is evergreen. And I believe this book has been revised over the years to adapt to some social media and some digital marketing tactics that are going to be effective for a very large period of time or long period of time. And so go get the book, folks. This is really, really good. I think it, it's going to motivate you. It's going to help you. It's good for anybody in any position in the company because it's just general good business and everybody in, in business is in sales. So why not give the gift of fanatical prospecting? Thanks for watching to another episode.